What's up everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Home Belt Workshop. Today, I'm gonna take my homemade bell grinder and take it from awesome to even more awesome. Like I mentioned in the original video for this grinder, I already know that there's some improvements and some upgrades that need to be done, and that's what I'm gonna to tackle today. The first thing I'm gonna do is replace the motor. Now when I put this machine together, I used a very small motor only because it's what I had on hand. The one that's on there is currently only a third horsepower motor. Now that is just not enough power and I knew that going in, but I believe I've set it up correctly to where now all I need to do is swap out the motor, adjust the pulley sizes accordingly, and we're up and running. If I've set it up right in the first place, this is gonna be a simple process. All I need to do is unbolt the old motor. I'll remove the pulleys that are on there right now. I'm gonna install new pulleys and I'll bolt the new motor back in place. Now this new motor is a 1.5 horsepower motor, but it runs at twice the RPM. So I don't want this belt to be spinning that much, so I need to run these pulleys in a 2 to 1 ratio. That way I can slow the speed back down when it hits the main drive shaft. Otherwise, if I leave the pulleys as they are, it's in a 1 to 1 ratio, and I'll have the sanding belt spinning at like 3500 RPM, and I just don't want it to be spinning that fast. With the new motor in place, now we need to address this mess of wires. For the wiring for the motor, I've got this cool little paddle switch that I'm gonna use. It fits in a standard electrical box. I need to make some sort of a mounting bracket to attach this box to my grinder. I've got this piece of flat stock here. It's got some paint and stuff on it. I don't really know where it came from. First thing I'm gonna do is take a flat disc in my angle grinder and I'm gonna clean off some of this paint. Then I'll just bend it around into kind of a C-channel shape. We'll drill a couple of mounting holes. Now I'll mark out the bolt hole locations using a sharpie so that I can drill and tap the mounting holes in the aluminum plate. Now I'll just give the bracket and the box a coat of spray paint. And we'll call those parts done. To wire this up, it's really not that complicated. There's really only two leads inside this motor. Now there's a bunch of different combinations depending on whether or not you're running it in 115 or 220 and which rotation direction you want the motor to run. You can switch these leads around, but at the end of the day, you only have two leads once you have the combinations all together. So pretty simple to wire up. First, I'm just gonna install a cable clamp in the bottom of the box on the motor. I've got a short section of cord that I'm gonna use to run from the motor to the back of the switch box. I'll just strip off the ends so that I can make the connections. I'm using a pair of automatic wire strippers. Now, I really like these things. Some people can't stand them, but I personally think they're great. I'll just make all the electrical connections inside the box for the motor and I'll close it up. Now using a couple of bolts, I'll install the bracket and the box that'll house the switch. Now I can install another cable clamp into the back of this box. This box has threaded holes, so I don't really need this lock washer. Now I can feed the wire coming from the motor, as well as my actual power cable, through the connector on the back of the electrical box. I'll make the connections to the switch, and the ground, and then we'll screw the switch in place. Uh, well, something was 
Something's not hooked up right or something. <laughs> As soon as I hit the power switch, the uh, the breaker tripped. I have to figure out what's up with that. <laughs> At least I didn't get electrocuted. And just a quick test run. Works fine. Had a little wiring snafu there, popped the breaker the first time. Helps if you connect the right wire to the right terminal. Now we're good to go. Now I'm gonna move on to the frame. Now I'll just give the frame a good sanding. And I'll give the base a coat of paint. Now it might be easier just to paint everything all at once, but I'm kind of working in sections from one part of the machine to another. My thought is that while the paint dries on one piece, I can go ahead and work on the next piece, and then by the time the paint's dry, I can go ahead and start assembling the previous piece. Now while the paint's drying on the base, I'm gonna move on to the tensioning and tracking arm. The first thing I need to do with this arm is I need to relocate this handle. I've got a knob that's going to replace the bolt in the side to adjust the tracking wheel and it's just a little bit too tight. So I'm going to remove this, drill a hole up here and relocate it up a little bit out of the way. While the paint's drying on the tracking arm, I'm going to bolt the main frame back on. Hopefully now my oddball method of painting kind of makes sense. One part's dry, I can work on that while the other piece is drying. I'll reinstall the drive shaft so that I can mark off the length where I need to cut it. Then I'll remove the shaft again and cut it off with a grinding wheel. Now I've got the main body back together. I've got some heavier springs on here so I don't have to have that oddball combination of four springs. It's got plenty of tension. It's time to move on to the platen. So to redo the platen, I removed the rollers and looking at the marks on this aluminum where the belt hits it, I need to trim this off to give the belt a little bit of clearance and so I can access it from either side. I'm gonna trim the same amount off of both ends. I've marked out where I need to cut this piece. I've also laid out for a recess so that I can access both sides of the belt without having to work around the edge of this aluminum. So I need to cut all the way around here. And using some blades made for aluminum in my jigsaw, I'm just gonna cut away on that mark. After I got everything sanded down, I decided that I would experiment a little bit and hit this thing with my buffer in some green chrome rouge. 
It's really just to see what kind of a finish I can get out of this aluminum. Look at that. That came out pretty cool. It's almost a mirror finish. I don't know if that's the best idea or not, but at least for now, it looks cool. Gives the grinder a little bit of bling. And I guess if I don't like it, I'll just hit it with some 220, take that polish right back off. So with the platen reassembled, you can see now that I have access to all sides of the belts. And if I want to remove this particular piece, I can actually get some access to do some slack belt grinding where there's no backing on the sanding belt. All I need to do is reinstall the arm that mounts this to the machine. And if you remember when I actually built this, I was talking about I wanted to replace this piece of square tubing with hopefully a piece of square inch and a half stock. Well, I wasn't able to find some inch and a half stock without really going out of town to locate this piece, but I was able to go to my local steel yard and pick up this piece of 3 16 wall, inch and a half square tubing. It's a lot beefier than the other piece. So I'm just gonna cut this down really quick, drill a couple of holes, and then I'll reattach it. Well, what do you guys think of the upgrades? I'm really liking it. I liked this thing before, but the upgrades definitely finish this little piece of machinery off and make it a lot more usable and easier to operate. It's kind of nice to have a power switch. So we don't have to just plug it into an outlet. We've got some knobs and some quick release adjustments so I don't have to use those bolts. Relocated this handle so I don't pinch my fingers. It was too close to that knob before. We've got a little tool rest here so that you can have a workpiece on there. This just bolts on, it's just bolted together. Nothing really fancy. I had to spend a little bit of time shimming this little spacer right here to get the alignment of the platen assembly just right. Uh, maybe that's not cut quite square or something, so I had to put a little shim in there. Uh, about a 12, 15 thousandths shim right in here just to tip that over a little bit to get everything into alignment. Other than that, I like the new springs. I don't have to have those combination of four different springs to get enough tension. I have just the two on there. It looks a lot cleaner and this thing's ready to get to work. Speaking of get to work, I ordered a whole bunch of different belts that I'll be trying out in the future as I start to do some projects and things with this and I will let you guys know kind of what I'm using and how they're working out because I haven't really had a chance to try them out yet because I wanted to get these improvements done but I will definitely keep you guys in the loop as to what's going on. I'm still very new to using this machine, so I'm still gotta learn all about the belts. There's tons of different ones. I got some that I think will be pretty cool, and we'll see how they work out. So thanks a lot for watching this video, everyone. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate the support. Also, down in the description, you'll find links to all my social media channels, as well as links to my website, homebuiltworkshop.com, where you can get some of the stickers like I put on the side of this machine. If you're interested, head on over there to my website, click on the store, and you can pick you up some of those. So let me know down in the comments what you thought of this. If you haven't seen the original video where I built this machine, I'll put a link to that down below in the description as well. So thanks a lot for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.